Hello everyone and welcome back to this month's video where we have a delightful surprise for you all. Some of you may know the very first fandom I joined was a series called Redwall. I watched the show growing up on PBS Kids and then discovered the books in middle school. It's a series written by Brian Jocks. Uh, so this is a series that I grew up as a child, as an adolescent, and still as an adult I do try to read every now and again. So. Um, the book series entails little woodland creatures that go on many different adventures, and each book, there's about 20 some odd books, has its own different storyline uh, that you should all totally go check out. But one of the things that stands out about Redwall are the feast, which were absolutely described in such a delicious way that could make anyone drool, especially me. I was very hungry after reading those. And I thought, why not recreate some of those foods from the feast? But in order to do that, I needed to uh, have some assistance from a chef. So I have with me today... Hello everyone, my name is Emily Emmerich. I am Jen's younger sister. Yeah, we are not twins. I grew up, um, I had always had a passion for baking and cooking since I was five years old. Um, I actually did go to culinary school. I graduated with honors at Allegheny College of Maryland. Um, I'm hoping one day to open my own little shop or operate it and just, you know, let everyone taste what I create. Um, I do, however, have a Facebook page. Um, it's called Anne's Edibles, and I'm very, very excited to be here and collab with my big sister. Yay. And we're Yay. excited to have you as well. So Thank welcome. you. The sponge cake for the Great Hall cake. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so go ahead and direct that. So let's know what we're looking for. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure out our dry ingredients. We always want to keep them. This cake is actually you do the wet ingredients and the dry ingredients, and then you incorporate into the cake. So we'll measure out our dry ingredients first because you want to sift them because this the finer it is, the fluffier the cake will be. All right, so first things first, we do one cup of all-purpose flour. My apologies. <laughs> um, if my little chef would actually go into that drawer and get a butter knife for me. When you are baking, uh, there you go, happy day. You two don't come after me, it's a butter knife. <laughs> so when you're doing a recipe like this, you actually want to, excuse <laughs> So when you're doing something like this, you actually want to scoop the flour into your container, into what you're measuring. So I know it's a little bit over the top. Oh, I don't so. think it's... Oh wait. <laughs> I designated both. <laughs> you are the designated. So what you want to do is you want to measure out your flour, like scoop it out into your cup, and then you just level it off. And voila, you got one beautiful cup of flour. So I'm going to go ahead and close the lid on this. Okay. So, now we have our sifter. Okay. So we, for the dry ingredients, we just have flour and baking powder. So we're going to measure the flour out in here. And then I need one teaspoon of baking soda. I mean, baking powder, my apologies, <laughs> my apologies. I'm used to saying baking soda because I'm used to making tons and tons of cookies. Makes sense. <laughs> so, and luckily with your baking powder, it already has like a little lever in it. So you can use that. And there we go. And voila. And put that off to the side. Baking powder, okay. And then you just want to gently tap it in. So if my sous chef will go ahead and do that. Oh, I'm a sous chef now. Look yeah, at the Jen, Jen, got Jen got a promotion. But that, but the way she has it in here, it looks beautiful. It's perfect. so hard to tell because of the white on white. <laughs> oh yeah, white on white. Not a really good thing. For my name, I'm not a professional on egg cracking. <laughs> <laughs> Any egg shop? <laughs> well, it's 
speaking, rats eat eggshells. Rats eat eggshells. So I wonder if Luna the Scourge did. That I can see. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so we measured out our six eggs. So. so, go ahead and get rid of all this. Um, may I have a towel? My hands are a little sticky. My paws are a little sticky. Mm -hmm. Measure out the sugar. One cup of sugar. And then we get to mix it with the vanilla. With sugar, sugar's pretty easy. And the sugar. Now I know I'm supposed to measure my vanilla. I don't. <gasps> I don't. Oh my god. I don't. Oh my god. Sorry. I didn't. I wish the camera had recorded my face. Cause. Oh my god. <laughs> Um, it was technically speaking supposed to be one teaspoon, but I ended up putting a tablespoon in. I like a lot of flavor in my stuff. Oh so. yes, we should also say that the recipe we have is from Tatiana's Everyday Food. It's her sangria summer cake, and that's what we're using for a great party. Whoopsie. And we'll increase the speed so that way it gets hot. Because we want it to be, according to our recipe, it's supposed to be seven to nine minutes so this is going to take our food so we got some time on it in the meantime we went ahead and we already prepped our oven our oven is preheated to 350 and we have eight inch cake pans greased you don't want to grease the sides of the pan <laughs> you just want to grease the bottom because if you grease the sides it's gonna leave a really dark crust around the cake and when it does that, it will not taste good at all. So you just want to do the bottom, because the bottom is where you're going to need the most. Remember those couple of times I made the Boston cream pie? Remember the couple of times I made Boston cream pie and I always have trouble trying to get it out of the pan? Yeah. I do remember that. That was, that was a learning experience. Well, I learned learn from that. Yeah. And you were able to... When a pan them. says it's non-stick, grease it just in case. You Let's never be safe know. Sorry. Yeah. And a lot of bakers, I know a few bakers that I know of, like Jeff Goldman, Buddy Blastro, they actually grease and parchment their pans a lot. Even though their pans are older and stuff, the non stick does wear off over time. That's important. Mm -hmm. So, alright, we're gonna let this go for a few minutes, and while that's doing what it needs to do, we already got our beautiful mixture done. So, we're gonna go ahead and our mixture is still going, so we're going to go ahead and do the pie crust for the deeper and over pie. Now this recipe is basically our great grandmother's recipe with an M's twist. I think it was our great grandma's recipe. Oh, yeah. So this recipe, we need two and a half cups of flour. <laughs> Gravity, people. It is very strong today. Oh, I swear it's a butter knife. <laughs> we promise we won't get out the real knives yet. <laughs> yet. Alright, so we got two cups of flour. Two and a half cups of flour. May I have the half cup, please? You always, when you're doing a high crust, always, always, always measure your ingredients. One time I didn't measure out uh, great grandma's uh, flour and the salt and the butter and it did not turn out right. Sad pie crust. Very sad pie crust. And I kept apologizing to my mother, who I served it to. Oh, no. I thought about my mother. <laughs> Hi, Mom, if you're ever watching. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mama. Okay, so we got our flour mix. So now we're going to add some salt to it. This recipe says a teaspoon. But because my butter is already salted, I'm going to use half a teaspoon. I dig it. Yeah. I remember half a teaspoon of salt. And on the side. Shall we go ahead and get the flour out of the way? Yeah. Just thinking you have to get rid of both hands. <laughs> I'm scared to get over here. Uh, that's it. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Thank you. Alright, so I'm just going to use my little knife and I'm just going to stir it, give it a little mix, try to get that salt in there. Now, for the fun part, butter. You want to make sure your butter
butter is cold. Like, very, very cold. So you, if you want to, if you're making this like a quick one, um, I would say put it in the freezer for like an hour. I'm here. I actually put my butter in for overnight. So that way it's extra cold. This I just did a couple hours. Some people use a pie crust, pie oh, yeah. pastry cutter. Yeah. I like to use my hands. It's old fashioned, but we take grandma for we did it. So. Exactly. She didn't have the fancy materials. Get your paws dirty, people. <laughs> Come on, let's get them paws dirty. Probably Friar Hugo did it too. Friar Hugo, the hairs, mm -hmm. the moles. Because that's the who mole Oh my goodness, yes. Oh. So when you're doing your pie crust, you want to make sure it's pea size. You've got to make sure it's pea size for the butter. And you want to make sure there's butter in every single bite. To get it, your butter to pea size dough, pea size clumps. Sand. Yeah, sand, pea size. Make sure every little crumb's in there. You want to get every little bite. Grandma Lois always said, chefs should not be wasteful. And then you need to bring take everything out. Okay? So I'm gonna make a small well in the middle. And now I need my tablespoon. Most people do it in the bowl. I like to do it outside the bowl. So I'm gonna add two tablespoons of ice water. You gotta make sure it's ice water. If it's because the ice water will keep the butter from melting and stuff, because you're using your hands a lot. So why do you like to do it outside the bowl? You got more room. Okay, that's fair. You got more room. Because mm -hmm. so I know there are some people that like to do it like inside. Mm -hmm. Some people do. And mm -hmm. I guess it's just a preference. I think. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's like Play-Doh. Yeah. Okay. Would you be able to add one more tablespoon? Sure. I think it just needs a couple more tablespoons and then it'd be perfect. There's one, one, and then add one more. You always want to do one tablespoon to two tablespoons at a time. You do any more than that, you're going to get a wet, lumpy dough. Yeah, we don't have that. No, we want a flaky, beautiful dough. And this is almost ready. Once I'm done, just a little more knead. And then... So once you got more water in, you just want to... I just squeeze gently. Don't want to overwork it, but I just squeeze it into a ball. So cool. It's like a skin cast. Oh my gosh, and guess what? It kind of looks like a mole face. It does. <laughs> it's formal. I am formal. I will eat you. <laughs> no, I will be needing to work rest. All right. And there is our beautiful pie crust. So, oh, and, and you always want to get the good stuff off your hands. <laughs> pie crust meat, we're going to go ahead and plastic wrap it. When I make my pie crust, I let it sit overnight because you want to form gluten and it makes it very flaky and delicious. So with my sous chef, okay, wrap me some, wrap me I'm some supposed to remind you of turkey eggs. And the eggs are almost there, they have about one to two more minutes. You want to tell people how long those eggs have been going for? They've been going on low for a bit. It should have been high. Like 15 minutes? Uh, 15 minutes, yeah. But it's been going on for quite some time, so we're going to go ahead and wrap it. And then flip it over, and then we want to grab that marker, and we're going to make a little smiley face. Because, why not? Because it's going to be happy dough. And voila! And that is your pie crust.
So I have a little bit of here. 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 I have a little bit of here.
Yes. Mayor. Don't call me. <laughs> that makes me feel old. I, it is a force of habit. When you work in the, when you work in the kitchen stuff, you mm -hmm. always say ma'am or sir mm -hmm. as a sign of respect. And because this is your channel, I want to say ma'am. <laughs> so we are going to mix that together. Okay. I'm just going to use my hands. Sure. Let's see, you're done. We'll mix this and you probably do want a spoon. Or we can use we have the spatula here. You oh, think that'll work? That will be perfect. Thank you. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to mix the oat flour and stuff like that. Okay. So go ahead. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Okay, and it says add the butter mixture. Oh, it says stir with a fork. That's all right. Fine. We're mixing it. That's the key. Mm -hmm. And so you have a mealy dough. I'm starting to a mealy dough. It's actually looking really good. Mm -hmm. um, here's your half cup. Is this a half cup? If you're doing a half cup of flour, anytime you're um, going to milk. Yeah, half. so you're going to use this. Just dump out the water. Any you never want to use dry measuring cups to measure what ingredients. There you go. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and add half a cup of milk, like a thick cake mix. It's kind of like a bannock, which is like a Scottish food, um, but it's gonna be sweeter because we added like the honey to it. Oh ho ho ho! It smells so good, y'all. Like, oh, and it is. Gorgeous. I can already tell you that's done. Mm. Mm. In my belly. Uh, no, right? Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this. So now we are gonna go ahead and just let that cool for a few minutes in the pan. You wanna let it cool in the pan because if you take it out right now, it's just gonna fall apart. So you wanna let it cool for a couple minutes in your pan. I'm gonna set timer for five minutes okay let it cool and then we're going to turn it out on a rack and let it cool completely very cool <laughs> guess cool for five minutes so now we are going to invert them onto a pipe thing onto a cooling rack so easiest way to do this take the cooling rack <laughs> a little bit so you might be you might want to come this way a little bit okay so as you can see, I don't really have that much space on this one, but that's okay. I will make it work. So all you gotta do is take it and flip. And somehow that actually came out with the parchment still in the pan. Nice. <laughs> so that's done. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this cake's probably gonna be very small, but that's okay. Now for this one, there's that method on how you wanna do it, or my favorite, take a knife, go around the edges. This one, I'm going around the edges, cause. And if this one just slides, oh, it just slid right out of my hand. with a very runny dough. So we went ahead and we grind up another cup of oat flour and it turned out beautiful. You kind of want it like almost like a oatmeal cooking type because these we're actually gonna put onto a greased cookie sheet and we're gonna bake them off. something that we can use if we don't want to use our paws. A cookie scoop. That's a smart idea. Oh my gosh. You might be able to do it though. And voila, a beautiful yeah. little round. You always want, anytime you're doing something like this, whether it's oat cakes or cookies or something, you always want them in the same consistency. So when I'm doing this, what I'm doing is I'm scooping it up and then I'm gently smoothing out a little bit off the top so that way they're all consistent and all the same size. But on the tr internally speaking, you're supposed to have it evenly out on the tray. But since it's this nice. this is not all a lot of recipes, a lot of cookie uh, oat cakes. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of batter, so we were able to just. Yeah, we're just gonna. Yeah, of course. There you go. 
Do you want to use? <laughs> yep, just and voila! Yeah. It is very simple. I love this idea. This is smart. You didn't even tell me on the phone that we were going to do this. I just thought we were either A, going to use our hands, or B, just use spoon. Well, it was depending on the dough, because the way that they had the dough sound like, it sounded like an actual, like, dough dough, like pie crust dough, or something like that. I was not expecting it to be, oh, sorry. I did not expect it to be mealy like that. So, all right, we are going to go ahead and put these in an oven, 350 degrees, for 10 minutes. The oats have come out of the oven and they smell divine. So we're gonna let these cool. We're gonna let these cool for a few minutes before we can handle them. We're gonna put them on our little white um, tray and then we will cover them once they are completely cool. What is this thing? So this is a pastry cutter. Some people use mashers like potato mashers. Mm -hmm. That's what you have, but this is a pastry cutter. So all you gotta do with this is just This is our finished strawberry, so we're gonna add just a little bit of sugar to this to um, bring out more of the sugar. We're gonna let it sit overnight to get more juices out, and then we're gonna strain it. Once it's strained in the morning, then we can add it to our strawberry cordial. Pretty cool. Now, we're gonna do the vegetables, prep our vegetables for the deeper and ever pie. We do not like beets. That's the one thing we do not like. My husband, Zach loves them. I mean, Zach loves them. I don't know why. We eat them straight out of the can. We're going to stick with the, the turnips, the potatoes, and the carrots, which we're just going to prep overnight so that way tomorrow morning we can boil them and then prep them into our pie fit for a bowl. So, we each got our potatoes and carrots. And turnips. And turnips. Don't forget the turnips. So, we are just going to peel. and ready to go. So we got everything peeled off and now we're just gonna cut everything into thin slices. When cutting, you're actually gonna, okay, so when you're gonna cut, you're gonna cut off the ends of your carrots. So we'll start with the carrots. We're gonna cut off the ends of our carrots and these we're just gonna do about mm, quarter inch thick, like that. Quarter inch thick, perfect. Yay. Or as we say, Perfect. <laughs> so we're just gonna cut these and we're gonna do a quarter inch thick for the potatoes and the turnips as well. Alrighty, so now we got our carrot cut up. Now we're gonna do potatoes. With potatoes, we're gonna cut them in half and then we're gonna do the quarter inch thick slice. Now we have our potatoes and our carrots beautifully cut. Nice work, beautiful chef. Yeah. Now we get to cut the turnip. So with the turnip, same way with the potatoes, cut in half. Well, with these, we're gonna cut into quarters. So cut the, cut it in half, and then we're gonna turn on its side where you cut it, and then we're gonna cut it again. Half and half. Mm -hmm. And then once it looks like this, you're going to cut it, yep, once you cut it just like that, we're going to cut it, this one, mm -hmm. there you go. We're done! Yay! So now we're gonna go ahead 
and put these in our bowl. We're gonna put them in our bowl and then we're gonna cover it with water because if you don't add water to the potatoes, they're gonna get brown and we don't want that. We don't want brown potatoes. Yeah, it's kind of like Just apples and bananas, like whenever it's like exposed to air. Or stuff. avocado. Mm -hmm. Avocado. Sounds mm. good. They integrated avocados in Red Bull. Oh, I wish they did. Can you see Basil's snack hair trying to eat an avocado? Great, blue me. What is this big thing in the middle of it? Nearly broke my teeth off. What? What? <laughs> So we got our mixture, we're gonna add some water to this, and then we're, now you wanna make sure when you add water, you don't wanna just add a little bit of water, you wanna cover it, like you want it fully covered with water. Then we're gonna stick it in the fridge, and we, and then we're gonna boil it tomorrow and have it ready for our deep water pie. We're gonna make the meadow cream that we're gonna have for on top of the oat cakes tomorrow. So the recipe calls for one third cup heavy whipping cream, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. And then, can you measure out one third cup of honey with that same measuring cup, please? You can adjust this recipe to your specified taste and stuff. So we're gonna stick with what they actually had, and that was a third cup of that. So to measure a third cup of butter, you need five tablespoons and a third of a tablespoon. So. It's basically your best guess. Yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, and... You know, it's soft. You know what? We'll just add the rest of those. Sounds good to me. Because I'm new to this recipe, a little extra butter will not kill it. Mm -hmm. May I have my whisk attachment? And now a third cup of honey. just in case if we want to add some more honey to it. And then one quarter cup of sugar. Okay. Yeah, and with the meadow cream, it was like in every single book. The characters were eating things with meadow cream, like during tea time or as desserts, as like sides and stuff. Or so putting on top of oat cakes for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start on low. All right, so this is about five minutes of whipping. And look at that. It's getting there. It's not quite perfect. I guess I was expecting uh, like a cool whip consistency. I know they always make it sound so light and fluffy. And when we first started mixing, it looked like yeasty and stuff, but now it's starting to thicken up a bit. So give that a couple more minutes and then we'll chill it. We're now gonna put it in our little serving dish. Isn't it so cute? So red wally. And it's mm -hmm. gonna get spread, squished. So we just gotta put this in here, but look at that beautiful meadow oh, green. Goodness, it's delicious. We tasted it and yeah. tested it <laughs> to see if we want it sweeter or not. And we think what we put it was delicious. So I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna get every single little itty bitty scraper. Mm -hmm. This stuff is good. Now I see why they put it on everything. Yes. And even the recipe says to serve over everything. Mm -hmm. So serve over everything. Yeah. We have it in our little container. We're gonna go ahead and plastic wrap it and let it chill overnight. And then tomorrow, we're gonna have it over our oat cakes with a nice glass of coffee. All right, we're all cleaned up. We got everything set up for tomorrow that we're gonna need. So right now I'm gonna go to the dormitories and sleep. Good night, sister! <laughs> so we have our breakfast, which of course we made these oat cakes in it before you all saw that. So oat cakes were a staple for breakfast. Sometimes they were eaten on the side with soups and whatnot, and sometimes taken on adventures that the warriors would bring in their little knapsacks when trying to go and defeat whatever villain they needed to face. So we have our oat cakes, which we're gonna go ahead and set and wait. Okay. So I'm gonna give you a couple of another couple of oat cakes, two cakes, and they spread meadow cream on everything. Most of the animals I noticed they spread it on thick. Yeah. But we don't like a whole lot of stuff. Like, like I'm wondering how sweet this is gonna be since we added the honey and everything. Mm -hmm. So I am curious about it. 
and I'll make money. And look, and we actually had a few to start with, a couple, but I think the mice got into them. Oh. <laughs> Somebody wanted a late night snack. I so. blame Bowser's back hair. <laughs> the stomach on legs. Cheers! Mm. I didn't say why they took this. <laughs> I'm about to have a visitor. sweeter than I imagined. Um, I don't know how they would have eaten this with soups, like dipping it in like hot root soup, which we're going to be making later on and stuff. But I do enjoy them. It's like like a little oatmeal cake. I think they had them bigger and flatter. That's what I was thinking too. I was wondering if they were like flat. Kind of like pancakes. Kind of like pancakes. Like a very thick, like, um, kind of like a arepa. Like the, like, the thickness and stuff, and they, I think they would fry them, like put them on a griddle, mm -hmm. out, and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. I should probably need to fix my bags better. Okay, so, and we do have some questions that we're going to be answering throughout the video as we're cooking and eating. The first one being, what is your favorite red wall book? Mine is Tagaron. Really? I've always liked Denya and the otters and stuff. It's based on otters. I've always liked the otters because like, they, they have this fun personality, but they also know when time of trouble is coming. Like They also prepare themselves for that. And otters are also my husband's favorite animal. So, and ironic. But um, I've always liked Tagaron because of the otters and the storyline based on that. Um, I always did like Denya's uh, little mouse friend. He was always cute. He was always fun. But I always, and then um, Denya's older sister and the mother. I loved the mother. Like they always said, like she was the be this best cook, and like she could make anything, even with just a few simple ingredients. And that's what I like to do. Like just take a few ingredients, put it together, and make a delicious meal. So, what is your favorite red wall book? <laughs> Um, I think Martin the Warrior. Um, I liked the the series as a kid. Um, but like I think it was like season three. They actually did Martin the Warrior. Mm -hmm. I liked his background story. Um, how he was able to escape the prison. Hence, spoiler warnings if you haven't seen <laughs> or watched this. But just like how he was able to like become a warrior before he came to Lost Flower and started Burnwell mm -hmm. Abbey with the other mice. Before he laid down his sword in peace, mm -hmm. like yeah. Mm -hmm was this warrior and then mm -hmm. and the story with Rose. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, Rose. So sweet. We love Rose. <laughs> and then um, the other thing too, which just blew out of my head, was it? So is that Rose? Uh, Rose's sister, uh, brother. Oh, Rose's brother. I can't remember that. Rose's mm -hmm. brother. Something else with that. I did forget. <laughs> oh, I, um, the first copy of Martin the Warrior, I did love so much that the pages were falling out, so I did have to buy a new copy. That's how much not just me, but I think Emily and Mom also helped with that too. Yeah, I think we did too. <laughs> Alrighty, but we're going to go ahead and finish eating and we'll see you in a bit. Just finished breakfast and cleaning up. Yummy, yummy. <laughs> so what's next on the agenda? We are going to start the feast, but first we need the proper gear. Yay. Proper equipment, always have an apron. Because I remember Friar Hugo always had an apron to wipe the sweat off his brow. Yeah. So we're all ready to go, so what's next? We need to wash our paws, because that is very important. Always wash your hands before you handle any type of food, whether it's baked goods, fruit, vegetables, meat, anything. So we are going to go wash our paws, and we will be right back. We washed our paws, made sure they were nice and clean, front and back. And now we are going to start with the beverages for the feast. So we are going to do strawberry cordial and 
cool mint tea. Mm, sounds perfect. All right, so we're gonna go and get our ingredients ready to go. Okay, we have all the ingredients for the strawberry cordial, so we're gonna go ahead and start making it. So last night, during prep, we went ahead and we did our strawberries and they are beautiful. The sugar, we added a little bit of sugar into this to get some of the juice, more juices out and get, make it a little bit sweeter. So that way we don't have to add too much sugar to the drink itself. So if you would like to, you all you gotta do is strain the strawberries using a little strainer. And then you're gonna take a spatula. Go ahead and use it's alright, it's here. And there you go. And then you're just gonna mush the strawberries with this to get more juice out. There we go. There we go. Just be careful of your sides. So if you need to lift it up a little bit. And actually, we're gonna save this bit of strawberries because I have an idea for it with the cake. So while she's doing that, I'm gonna measure out, we measured out half a cup of whip, heavy whipping cream, put that in my little bowl. And I'm gonna add half a cup of confectioner sugar to it. And I might have added a little bit more, but that's okay. So I'm gonna add that to there. And the reason why I'm mixing the heavy whipping cream with the confectioner sugar, because if you add it to this, it's gonna clump in your drink. And we do not want that. So I'm gonna go ahead and whisk this up. It's all right, it's all right, it's good. So we're gonna trade positions. So I'm gonna give this to you and you're gonna go ahead and stir that up. Okay. Just whisk it really good. whipped cream. I have confectioner sugar. I don't have regular sugar. I do it every day. Okay, so this we're going to save for later. <laughs> Alright, so we got that. <laughs> and that looks beautiful. So we're going to go ahead and add that to this, but first we're going to add some tonic water. Well, <laughs> Water, seltzer water, club soda, you can add whatever you want to it. It was fun trying to find it. Busy. <laughs> Hence, this is a busy thing. strawberry cordial. Yeah. <laughs> and look at the, look at that. Oh my gosh, it's so bubbly. It's so bubbly. And to think that they made this in like the cakes. In the so cakes, my goodness. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know how Ambrose did it. My thing is, how the hell did he get it fizzy without this? Maybe he'll never let us know. It's a secret. It's a secret. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and stir that. And then we're going to go ahead and add the whipped cream mixture. Okay. And just give this a stir. So pink reminds me of um, a certain coffee company's pink drink. Mm, okay, I figured it out. <laughs> I think this is good. This looks amazing. Now, oh, and we forgot the important ingredient. Sugar. Sugar. Now we're just doing half a cup because we already have the confectioner sugar in here, and we had sugar in the strawberries last night. So we're just going to do half a cup. We're going to taste it, see if it's sweet enough for us. And if it is, we don't need to add any more. So would you like to stir it? And I'll get a couple of glasses for us to try it. it chills it'll probably be like it'll, it'll get, get more fizzy yeah. and it'll be definitely really delicious because they always talked about strawberry cordial being cool and refreshing mm -hmm. even though half the time it was sickly sweet and i can see why yeah we don't need any more sugar no but definitely not 
All right, so the strawberry cordial is done, and now we're gonna do the mint. Okay, so we have the strawberry cordial chilling in the fridge, so now we are going to make the mint tea. Basically, we are brewing some water for the tea itself, and then I am also making a mint simple syrup. It is very easy to do. So you measure two cups of water into your saucepan, and then you gotta bring that to a light boil. You add one cup of sugar, some people like that a little bit sweeter, you can add more to it and that's fine. But for trying to make the sugar, try to make it sweet. Because you want the sugar to dissolve. Give it a tiny bit of a nice little whisk. But now that the sugar is dissolved, we get to add our, our mints. Now, this is actually what my husband and I grew. We actually grew this mint together. So, so you just take a couple leaves off. I like to use the big ones. Some big, some small. So we'll just add some mint to it. I'm adding about eight or nine sprigs. That's what the mint's called, it's called sprigs. So a few sprigs. There we go. And we're just gonna let this sit and boil for about 10 minutes. The water is at a full boil, so we're just gonna add this to our pitcher. I did about two quarts of water and six tea bags. We're gonna let that steep for about 25 to 30 minutes to get it nice and strong. And also too, to let it cool down before we add the mint syrup to it. It is officially brewed and it looks fantastic. This is the color we want it. So now we're gonna take the tea bags out. Thank you, Sydney. Give that a little stir, make sure, because sometimes the tea will set, like it'll be dark at one top and light at the top. So give it a little stir. And now we can pour our mint syrup into the mix. I do have another question to ask, which is what is your favorite Red Bull character? Is this book or movie? Maybe both. Both? Either Mamie or Rose. I, I did love Rose. She was very sweet and she was affectionate and she saw like beauty and everything, no matter what it was. Even in Bad Rand's um, castle and fortress, she saw beauty and light because there was Martin. Mm -hmm. And Martin actually found a side of himself that he always thought, like he always thought he was going to be this angry person who always thought it's just going to be war, war, war. But Rose showed him that there can also be peace as well. So yeah, I think Rose, Rose will definitely, I think Rose definitely brings it up. Yeah. So what is your favorite character? Uh, I was going to say Cornflower, another female, uh, <laughs> I guess protagonist or supporting character in the series. So I just like how she supported Matthias, kind of like Rose did with uh, Martin. Martin. So like, yeah. Matthias had Cornflower. Martin had rose. Yep, exactly. Alright, how's our tea looking? It looks fantastic. So I'm gonna grab two cups and we're gonna put some ice in them because this is cool mint tea. So we're gonna get some ice and we're gonna test it. Let's do a taste test. Make sure the lid's on. You do not want it splattering everywhere. Thank you. You're welcome. just with a simple mint simple syrup. Alrighty, so we're making another red wall favorite that was mentioned in pretty much every single book, which was the candy nuts. And normally red wallers would use chestnuts, walnuts, they would eat them as a snack, take them on their adventures. So we're gonna go ahead and make some right here. So walk us through. Okay, so what you're gonna need is just basically three simple ingredients, sugar, water, and nuts. That is it. So you're gonna start with two tablespoons of sugar. Put, you're gonna, we're gonna do this in the microwave. Um, the original recipe said stove, but we're just gonna do the microwave. So two tablespoons of sugar, and then you're gonna do one and a half ta teaspoons of water. You want the sugar to, you want a little more sugar than water. Okay, there we go. Just give this a little stir. So it's a little dissolved. Okay. 
and then we're going to stick it in the microwave until the sugar and water have become a sticky little mess. So we'll be right back and we'll show you what it looks like. So we put this in the microwave for about a minute to get it nice and sticky and it became beautiful, warm, clumpy. So now we're going to add the nuts to it. And we're doing a cup of almonds. So we're going to do that. And nice while you're stirring, I have another question for you. Which is, what is your favorite Red Wolf quote or battle cry? <laughs> Mine would be um, either oh, Eu Lalia or Red Wolf. I'm one of those two classics. Yeah. Then there's like, Give them Blood and Vinegar. Give them Blood and Vinegar. Tree Dogs and Timber. Okay, that one was a good one. Mm -hmm. um, so that are coming to mind. But yeah, Eualia is definitely a uh, log -a log -a log. Log -a log of the shoes. Yes. Ooh, I think we have some really good candy nuts right here. stove and stuff mm -hmm. and then they would take them as a snack mm -hmm. for that I think didn't Basil say care of warming up or something. Maybe. Maybe. But no, knowing mm -hmm. him he probably would have. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I can definitely see them toasted. Mm -hmm. So toasted with them. and with these you can add um, more sugar on them if you want to. If you like them like this. You can also top them off with some cinnamon sugar if you really want to. Just some cinnamon. Um, some people when they do candy nuts, some people just use honey. It's a natural sweetener, so some people will just warm up a little honey, put the nuts in it, and there you go. Simple candy nuts. Awesome. So, all right, we're gonna let these cool, and then on to the next one. A So the next thing we are making is the deeper and ever pie. Something I always wanted to try as a kid. So what we're gonna do is we're first gonna roll out our pie crust that we made last night in the cube. So we're gonna go ahead and if my sous chef will But it was still tasty. It was still tasty. You just <laughs> so we already had that up. So now go ahead and I don't know that small eye flour our work surface. You always want to make sure it's lightly floured. You don't want to add too much flour to this because then it'll still get tough up. So go ahead. Yeah. And she is. Do you want to let it sit for a couple of minutes? Do that. And then you heavily dust your rolling pin. I love this thing. I love this. And then I just go a little bit at a time. If you don't want to press too hard, because then you'll lose half the pie crust like I just did. But then all you gotta do is just gently squish it back together. So just gently roll it out. You wanna take a try? Gently. Yeah, just gently roll it. So we have it rolled out to about a quarter of an inch thick. So now, here's a little tip. So when you're trying to pick up pie crust, you can actually do what I like to call the triangle. You basically fold it in half, and then fold it in half again. Don't worry, we can count it up. Probably the most did that a lot. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and take our pie pan, our beautifully prepped pie pan. And then all you do is pick this up and slide it in the middle. Oops, I know, just a little bit. And then you just unfold it. And there you go. Now I know it looks a little messy, so what we're going to do is we're going to patch it up and make it look pretty. We got our pie crust cream thanks to Chef Emily here. <laughs> so now we're going to start the vegetable. And how the recipe has it, um, it kind of sounds like an earthy lasagna. It's like you know, potato, turnip, carrot, and whatnot. Um, we're just going to do like a hodgepodge mix and just mix it up that way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and get our vegetables ready to go. Mm -hmm. 
ready. So now it's time to assemble our deeper and ever pie. So what are we gonna start with? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with some of the carrots and potatoes. We're gonna just add some of these to this. And then while I'm layering, I'm gonna be adding um, some salt and pepper. Sure you season it very, very well. Yeah, you will. Because Gordon Ramsay, if you were watching this, <laughs> I make sure everything has seasoning. <laughs> okay, so that's a good first little layer. I'm gonna go ahead and add some pepper. I'm gonna layer this. I'm gonna layer this in here. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a depth. Now, as you can see, we actually have the pie pan on a tray. You want that because you, because if something like goes over and stuff, you still have something there. So, you do the same thing. So. Also, it's just easier to like take out of the oven too. You don't worry about like yeah, mm -hmm. don't worry about the wobblies. Okay, well this looks very good, and you want to leave a little bit off the top because. While we're, because this has to bake in the oven at 350 for 15 minutes. While that's in the oven, we are gonna make our souffle topping off camera. So we're gonna go ahead and clean up, but we need some woodland creatures to help us. Are you ready to start cleaning? Our pie just came out of the oven. We put it in at 350 for 20 minutes, and it smells divine. So now we're gonna use now we're gonna top it with our souffle mixture. All it is is egg whites, sour cream, onion, and a little bit of salt and pepper and garlic. That's all it is, and sour cream. Back in the oven, 350 for about 50 minutes to an hour until the top is patchy brown, and we'll see you in a bit. So guess what's done? Our beautiful deeper and over pot. And that is supposed to be looking. I hope the moles like it because we did not follow the recipe that much. So everything is going according to plan. So now we are making the frosting for our Great Hall cake. Already we took some raspberries and we heated it up on the stove with a third cup of sugar. Um, so we let that go and we strained it, let it cool for about 10 minutes in the freezer and it came out perfectly. We also melted some white chocolate, as you can see. Beautiful, beautiful. And we are gonna be adding some of that to the frosting as we gotta make the whipped cream. So in my stand mixer, I have about four cups of heavy whipping cream and two and a half cups of um, confectioner sugar. You just wanna start it on low, don't wanna go too fast, and then you can speed it up as you go. Take about 10, 15 minutes, depending on your mixer. Our whipped cream is finally done. So now we are going to add the cream cheese. We're gonna add some cream cheese to this. This will help thicken it, so that way it doesn't like flop when we go to decorate the cake. So we're gonna add that, and we're gonna add about some. We're gonna add some vanilla too to give it some extra flavor. Add this. I don't know how the red wallers did this by hand. I know by Paul just like mixing everything. They didn't have fancy stand mixers or no. stuff like that. Well, so. a lot of chefs they actually do whip their whipped cream by hand. Whisk and add some vanilla. There we go. Give this about a couple more minutes until the cream cheese until the cream cheese is mixed in, and then we'll go ahead and add our white chocolate and our raspberry sauce. Okay, so the cream cheese and the vanilla are mixed in, and this is gorgeous. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add about a cup of white chocolate and our raspberry mixture. Now we made this ahead of time. It has to be cool. If you don't cool this down, it will separate the whipped cream and you basically would have a mess on your hand. So we're gonna add that. Um, the recipe did recommend adding like a little bit of whipped cream, like a little bit of uh, um, food coloring if you wanna get that more of that pink color. And then you can actually separate some of this and have like a peach color with it. And I think that was a cup. So 
can't see the rest because we're saving the rest and making chocolate curls. Okay, so we're gonna let this go for a couple of minutes. Okay, our frosting is done and it smells amazing with the cream. And now we're gonna do some chocolate curls. So we got our plastic wrap now. So now we are going to thinly spread. Look at the sheen on that. So we're just gently gonna spread the chocolate. You wanna let it, you wanna spread it. Make sure it's not, not too thin, but you don't want it too thick either. And I saw that, by the way. <laughs> you are worse than Basil Stackhouse. <laughs> if this one would lick, he would have licked the whole bowl clean in like four he, seconds. <laughs> not even four seconds. He would have yeah. just like put the bowl in his mouth. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna let that do its thing. We're gonna let it sit for a couple of minutes. Now that the frosting's made, we get to do the fun part. Mm -hmm. Crumb coating the cake. We're gonna stack it up, assemble it, and by doing that, you're gonna take your first layer, you're gonna take a little bit of frosting, put it on the center. This will help keep the cake in place. That way it doesn't move around so much. Put your cake in the middle. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. So now we're gonna add a little bit of frosting to the center. Spread that around. You can use a spatula, an offset spatula, whatever you wanna do. Now, as you can see, I'm actually making I'm making this a little bit thinner in the center and thicker at the sides because we're gonna put the strawberries in the middle and what the icing is gonna do is gonna create a barrier so that way the strawberries don't get out and it's gonna mess up your cake. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, we have our center frosted. And if it does come out the side a little bit, that's fine because then we can use that for the crumb coat and then that way it'll catch all the stuff. Now for strawberries. Would you do the honors? Of course. All you gotta do is just keep it in the center. Okay. Pretty good. Okay. Yep, there you go. So Jen went ahead and put the strawberries in the center. So now I'm gonna put a little bit more frosting on top and that's gonna keep the second layer from sliding. That's gonna keep it from sliding. So just put a little bit more sugar. More sugar. More sugar. <laughs> and Dibbins are like, yes. Yes. I think the Dibbins <laughs> love this cake. Mm -hmm. I mean, you wouldn't. Like, and then you just use the spice cake. Up. Give it a little squish. You don't want to squish it too much, but you want to give it just enough so that way it doesn't, you know, go out. And perfectly center. So now we're going to do a crumb coat. So we just need that much frosting, and all you do is just smear it. And voila. So now we're going to let it sit in the fridge for about an hour. So that way it hardens, and then once you go to put your next layer on, it won't like you know it won't intermingle with each other. Sounds okay. Okay, so the chocolate is finally hardened and it's beautiful. So all you gotta do to do the chocolate curls, instead of making chocolate curls like I wanted, we made little shards. It's more like bark. Yeah, tree bark. Yeah, and we can put this around the cake and put some on top, and it kind of this kind of looks like the mountains. With the mountain. Gotta use your imagination. So our cake is chilling. It's our, it's in the fridge. It's gonna chill for an hour. And now we get to do the next dish that I've always wanted to do. The otter hot root soup. So we need all the ingredients in our equipment. So now we have all of our veggies ready for the hot root soup. We have leeks, celery, peppers, carrots, and potatoes. And then we're also gonna be adding shrimp to it as well. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna prep all of our vegetables and get those ready. And then we'll go on to the next step. So we have all of our veggies ready for the hot root soup. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna add a little oil to the pan. Let it get hot. It's gonna take a couple of minutes, so don't worry about that. Nice and hot now. Now we get to add our vegetables. We have leeks, celery, bell peppers, and carrots in here. We're just gonna add that to the pot.
give it a little stir. Now we're gonna let this go for about five to 10 minutes until the vegetables are translucent. And then we're gonna start adding all the rest of our ingredients. These have done what they were supposed to do in about five to 10 minutes, they, they're done. After they were done, I went ahead and added about a tablespoon of garlic and I let it cook for a minute. You don't wanna do longer than a minute or your garlic will burn. So now we are going to add our potatoes. Potatoes. If nobody gets that reference, I'm gonna be And then we are gonna add water, crushed tomatoes, a little bit of tomato paste, old bay, paprika, salt and pepper. I did about six to eight, I, bet, I did about seven cups of water because I didn't know how much water I was actually gonna need. Okay. This thing, and this is gorgeous. So we're gonna let this sit and simmer for about half an hour until the potatoes and all the veggies are nice and tender. We have another fun question, which is something I like to ask um, different people in different fandoms, which is, if you could hang out with a character for a day, which character would it be and what would you do? That is actually kind of an easy one. I would love to hang around Basil's hair. Really? Yes. The thing is, is that I probably would cook so much for him that I would be asking him to show me how to fight in combat. Like, he would teach me how to fight and I would feed him as well. <laughs> easy trade. A, a easy trade, yes, exactly. But also, too, he's fun to be around and he has, like, this upbeat personality, but he's also solemn and when he needs to be. And that's, like, he's just one of those people you want as a friend. Not to mention he's very funny. <laughs> he is very funny. So, and my choice would be Matthias, uh, one of the original Red Bull uh, characters. We would probably do some training, um, maybe just eat some food, hang out with cornflour and whatnot. So a pretty easy, chill day. Would it be with or without Mateo? Mateo. Mateo, yeah. Madame Mayo. <laughs> it's all good. Um, maybe Madame Mayo as well. Mm -hmm. Hang out in training. You could teach us. So I think that would be fun to do and see. So now we are going to be making another dessert item, which are called honey moles. They are a Dibbin's favorite treat. So we're going to go ahead and get our ingredients set up and we'll start prepping those. Have all of our stuff ready for our honey moles. So Measure out one and a half cups of flour. We are doubling this recipe because we want to share. And also too, I don't think there was more than just one per one divot. And also too, it's a sweet treat for them. And I think they would have loved it. Okay, so one and a half cups of flour. Now we get to measure out one stick of flour, which is half a cup. Okay, so do you want to go ahead and mix it? So we're going to measure out six tablespoons of powdered sugar. be a little bit mealier than the oat cakes. Like the oat cakes we were able to like just scoop out this we actually are going to divide into little lumps. So we're gonna go ahead and start adding the water. Need about a couple tablespoons so we're gonna start out with two. You always want to start with a little bit at a time. Always start out with a little bit at a time. You can always add more. Exactly. You'd rather Add a little bit at a time, then too much at a time, and then it just becomes a mess. That's perfect, because you want it to like clump in your hand like that. So what you're gonna do is you're just, yep, you're just gonna rub your hands together back and forth. Oh, a little sticky. Very sticky, a little sticky, very sticky. So now that the dough's done, we're gonna go ahead and just put it out on a lightly floured surface. Squeeze it into a ball. Roll it out into a log, that way we can have even pieces. It's a good idea. Because <laughs> we need 18 pieces. So, that's done. That looks pretty good. You want to make sure it's even all the way across. So we're gonna cut it in half. 
Now what I like to do is cut into thirds. Honestly, we might be making a little bit less than what we want, but that's okay. As long as they're the same size. There we go, we got 12 pieces. So now we just flatten the piece. And then we get into this. I'm about how thin. Just enough to cover a strawberry or a raspberry. So about like that. And there you go. See? Now we're gonna take a little bit of honey. Yeah, you got more hands than I do. So we're gonna take a little honey and we're gonna spread a little honey on top. Yeah. Add a little honey on top. Then you're gonna put your strawberry or raspberry in the middle. Raspberry. And then you just bring up the sides. Doesn't have to be fancy. Um, some people can just like you can just overlap the whole entire thing. And there we go. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna finish forming the rest of these and then we are gonna put grape jelly on top of them. So we have all of our animals wrapped. Now we get to do the fun part, grape jelly. The recipe also said you can use damson jelly, but we don't have any in this area, but grape jelly works just as well. It still gives it that sweetness. We're gonna bake these at 350 for 15 to 20 minutes. And once they're done, we get to plate them up Eat them. We have finished animals. They look pretty tasty. I'm super excited for these. And one of the Devons like these. So. Okay, so we have one more dish to prepare that was in the Red Wall book, which is the Grayling a la Red Wall. So it's a fish type of dish. So we're gonna need some fish, some nuts, and some cream sauce, uh, according to Frere Hugo. Great. So in order to make this fish recipe, we need some fish. And I think somebody said that they were gonna bring it in around this time, so I'm wondering... That's a fish. Well, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Our lovely little woodland creature brought us some beautiful trout. So we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna take the butter and we're just gonna gently try to get it over the fish as much as possible. And then we're just gonna add just a tiny bit of cooking wine on top of this to give it the fish some flavor in the top. And you wanna do the bottom too because you wanna make sure everything is nicely seasoned. And then we are gonna add salt and pepper to this as well. And then we're gonna bake it in the oven for, at 350 for 20 to 25 minutes. So our fish is in the oven. Now we get to make the sauce for the gravy on the red wall. All you do is turn on your pan to um, about high, and then you're gonna melt your butter. Once your butter gets melted, you're gonna add your flour and you're gonna make a roux. And you're gonna let cook for about two to three minutes. So while the trout was in the oven, we were also roasting some nuts for the honey roasted um, nuts for on top of the fish. So we roasted these for about 10 minutes at 350. And then we took honey, rosemary, and a little salt. We mixed it all together. And now we're gonna put it back in the oven for three more minutes. So the butter is nicely melted. And now we need to add our flour. Stir that up and let it cook for about one to two minutes. Stirring consistently and constantly. So now that our roux is a beautiful light brown, look at that, that's gorgeous and it smells amazing. I wouldn't tell you how much I love the smell of roux. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this off to the side. So we made our roux. And now we are going to add one cup of wine, some cooking wine. You always wanna use cooking wine. Now we're gonna bring this to a boil. And then once it's to a boil, we're gonna add our seasonings. So now that's going to a boil, it's starting to bubble. We're gonna add our seasonings and then we're gonna cover this 
we're gonna cover this and let it simmer for 15 minutes. It has been in the fridge for about an hour. Um, we are now going to go ahead and decorate it. So what you wanna do is you're gonna take a nice big gold glob of frosting and you're gonna spread it all around the sides, catching anything that's left, make it smooth and make it pretty. Our chef is doing that. We have another fun question, which is, so there's three different shows. There's Redwall, Madame Mayo, and Martin the Warrior. Growing up, or even now, which mm -hmm. one of those shows is your favorite? I'm gonna say Madame Mayo, because that one, I mean, I did not like the first one because I don't like snakes. Oh. And the third one, the third one seemed to drag a bit. I know the, I know the third one's supposed to be sad and everything because of the death of Rose, sorry, spoilers and everything else, but Madame Mayo was my favorite because like you have different perspectives. You have Slagar, you have the children, like you have different story points throughout mm -hmm. that film. Yeah, okay, so I was gonna say Madame Mayo as well because you get a little bit of uh, the lore about Lone Hedge, which was built before Redwall Abbey and how they were able to discover um, like the remains of Lone Hedge and whatnot. And then that became its own separate book um, as well. <clears throat> now, is there a book um, that you would want to see become a movie or? I would love to see Salamander Strong become a movie or a series because mm -hmm. I've oh, I love Sunshine, the with his golden mm -hmm. um, nose and everything. Yeah. That was I thought that was really unique, mm -hmm. like very different. So to have that, and also too, like he's talking to the chef about like you know everything tasting like the same and mm -hmm. stuff and it's like you know you have like this chef that's mean and it's like oh i need to go back and reread that when it's been a while okay oh, so. but our cake is fully frosted now and up the side a little bit it's a chef thing <laughs> so now we're gonna go ahead and decorate it with all kinds of fruits and fruits and the white chocolate and we have our cake mm -hmm. and it is gorgeous. It looks good. It smells good. We cannot wait to eat this. I'm excited. Soup has been simmering for 25 to 30 minutes and it smells divine. So now the otters brought in some shrimp for the hot root soup. So we're going to add that to our pot and we're going to let it cook for 5 to 10 minutes until the shrimp is done. The wine has been cooking for 15 minutes. Very alcohol. Holly, I'm not gonna lie. So now we are going to add in our roux. Put that in, give it a little stir. You wanna make sure you give it a really good stir so that way there's no clumps in your sauce. And that just take, it only takes a couple of seconds. Because once that's in, then you add your cream. And this is a quarter cup of heavy whipping cream. And then you just stir it until your sauce is thick and it's already thickening up really, really, really well. Our fish is done. It is delicious. It is up to temp and it smells divine. So now we just got it plated. So you just want to do your fish and it just came right off easily. So you got your fish. Gonna drizzle on some sauce. Of your sauce and then remember those honey roasted nuts that we had and just top them sprinkle on for a little crunch and then as fire hugo lives and breeze this is for you fire hugo some delicious mint leaves for garnish and voila grayling a la red ball well jen Thank you for having me on this collab, uh -huh. but there's one thing we still have to do left. And what is that? We need to look nice for the feast. Ta-da! What? <laughs> Don't we look beautiful for the feast? Yes, we do. So let's dig in.
and that concludes our video for the month. So thank you again, Chef Emily, for coming and helping. You are most welcome, Jen, and it was a pleasure being here with you today. Okay, thank you so much. And thank you to the viewers out there who watch. Let us know if you are also in the Redwall series fandom. Let us know your favorite characters, favorite books, and your favorite food, of course. So until then, make sure that you hit that like button, you hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you next month. So take care. Bye. Bye.